Yeah, I, I, I just, I, I wanted to call out a few key things because it's some things about Miss Jo, things that Miss Jovo said that stood out to me. Right, one of them was control. I heard that word. That word definitely stuck out for me. Um, another one of those words was, uh, or sentences is crying out for help, and that also stuck stuck out to me. What she said. I think that part of the problem when I watched the video and then when I researched certain, first of all, when I watched the video, it always, it already struck me in a certain way, because for one thing, a lot of the conversations that people are having are just taking this man's word for everything that he's saying. Right. Yeah. The problem with that is that he positioned himself as a victim after he you know, victimize somebody else. He then positioned himself as a victim. That's my first flag to say, okay, so what are the things that he's actually saying, right? Um, and so when he does that, now I'm looking and I'm saying how much of what he's saying can I even trust? I can't go to the people who he victimized to find out what their side of the story is because he didn't give them an opportunity to give their side of the story before he took their lives. Mm -hmm. So... I have not been able to verify through any news source or anything like that, that he had any allegations against him about molesting his children. But what I have been able to verify is that he definitely had protective orders that his ex-wife attempted to get, uh, that she was denied, that she was not um, able to get. And I will read exactly what was in those protective orders. Um, so in one of the orders, she said he threatened to kill me with a gun. That's what she said when she tried to get one of those protective orders in another protective order she said he has pushed shoved threatened and bit me in the past i am afraid of him and his anger and do not want to and i do not want him to know where i live he has access to weapons and she also claimed in the order that he is suicidal in another order she said he told her i am coming for you and she said i am terrified because i do not know what he is capable of I do not feel like I am safe and I feel that my life is in danger. These are the things that she stated in the protective orders that were denied to her. So when you say crying out for help, yeah, somebody was absolutely crying out for help and it was ignored, right? It got ignored. It wasn't taken mm -hmm. seriously. The cries for help that actually took place. When we talk about control, soon as I saw this situation, we see this every day. And what's really frustrating to me right now is I keep talking about these rewrites of history. And it's really weird to watch things in the moment and to watch us not want to call a spade a spade and pretend like we don't see what we're seeing. So I've seen a, a crop up or, or increase in like a denial of, of, of domestic violence, right? And those things that are happening and trying to turn it into something else. This is the textbook example of what domestic violence looks like, right? I'm looking at this man I looked it up and I saw and I and I Ms. Joe, I know you the you know you the professional, the mental health professional. <laughs> but I looked it up and I found uh an actual layout that has the eight stages of domestic homicide. The first stage is the pre-relationship history. Does that person have a history of domestic abuse? Does he have a history of course of control or stalking and different things like that? That's the first stage, the first red flag you can kind of determine that this kind of crime is going to take place. The second part is the early stage of the relationship. Like the relationship is kind of sped up. It happens very quickly. I'm going to assume that this relationship with the new woman could have possibly been sped up considering the fact that his ex-wife took those protective orders out against him as recently as last year. So this other woman that he's with that he got pregnant, they probably haven't been in a relationship that long. I'm just saying. That's my uh, assumption. Then you have the actual relationship, which includes some type of domestic abuse or coercive control. Like I said, I don't have the new what the new girlfriend's side of the story because she's no longer with us to tell us what happened. But yeah. we don't we don't know if that was happening in a relationship. But then what happens is that there's a trigger, and it's usually something happens that threatens that person's sense of control. So maybe if he has a history of violence, then I'm gonna assume that usually when people have a history of domestic violence and things like that, they do it to multiple people. So if he have a history that his ex-wife is saying that he uh, has done things to her, um, then I'm going to assume that that's maybe something he could have even been doing to the next girlfriend. And maybe she threatened to leave him or something like that. And he sensed a loss of control, right? And so he had to, so next what happened was the escalation. 
So that's now he has to gain back that sense of control that she made him lose. Next, after the escalation, is that now he has a change of thinking, which is now he has decided to murder. Like, that's the decision. Not going to talk him out of it. That's what he's going to do. He's about to take her out. She made him lose control. He got to get control back. He's going to do it by taking that person out. That's what he did. Then he have, you have the planning stage, which they may get weapons, do all of those other things. And then you actually have the homicide. And one of the things that stuck out to me, like you, it, even without having all of that background and all that context, it's just so crazy to me how you can see a man murder two separate women and then still feel like he could possibly be the victim and not see that this is obviously an abusive person. You murder two separate people, right? And then you you make excuses for it. You calmly and coolly make excuses for it before you murder the second person. And then considering that in one of her protective orders, she said, he told me he was coming for me. And then at the end of the video, you heard he said, today is the day. He did tell her that. I was going to point that out. Yeah. Absolutely. So, when so I it think- shows that mm-hmm. he, he has shown some aggressive behaviors and some threatening behaviors. And mm-hmm. he has had this plan. This was not, you know, completely just out of control dead. and emotional. Yeah. And like, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I, th- I, I, one of my thoughts when I saw this was, you know, my heart went out for the ladies because they were in their 40s, young, pretty young. Mm-hmm. I mean, who wants to die in their 40s, mm-hmm. right? Um, and their lives were taken from them. That, that was saddening. And I, and I, I was sad for him too, because I could see that he was troubled and I could see that he had some mental health issues. Um, he had this custody battle. I'm sure that weighed heavily on him. Um, supposedly there were some accusations. I never found any record of that. I, I read that it wasn't true that, that someone, that he was accused of molesting his child, if that happened, I can imagine that taking a big toll on you. Um, then he had this hospital suit. You know, he had actually been demoted from an anesthesiologist to um, being a, mm. a nurse, a general nurse practitioner. Um, and supposedly it's because he had ratted out a colleague about them hiding um, drugs. Now, I don't know if that's true, but, you know, this is, I, I, that's something that happened. He, maybe he was being upstanding and, and spoke up and it backfired on him. He was treated unfairly. If that's true, I can certainly understand the weight, right? So my heart went out to him too. You know, like I, I saw a troubled person that, you know, did something that is really unexcusable um, but it could have been, like Jovo said, it could have been prevented. Um, so I thought about mental health. I also think that people have to be careful with what we believe. Cannon, you mentioned this, you know, this custody battle. You know, first off, people forget that, like, his he, his kids was were with him when he did this. They were in the car. So he had access to his kids. You know, the narrative, I think, from a lot of Black manosphere where this woman, these women were trying to keep his kids from him, but the kids were with him in the car. He had access to his children. And then you also have to wonder, well, why would they want to keep the children from him? You know, one woman can say maybe that's not true. Two women, I don't know. Like, I... I I don't know. I give them all the benefit of the doubt. You know, you really, and it doesn't matter now because he's killed them all, right? He's killed them both, including himself. But you, it's so, I I noticed that a lot of people painted him as the victim. And this became about how women need to change because they're making men do these things. But it's like, we don't even know all the details um, about the situation. And at the end of the day, you know, he's lost his life he took his life those women lost their lives and we have children now who don't have parents and so i just don't think there's any excuse for it yeah i would feel sorry for them if he took his life first then i would feel sorry let me clarify because when i talk about mental health and i talk about cries for help and the analogy i used with the fire alarm let me just say this And I'm going to go back to what I said initially. The moment that 
somebody maybe witnessed the abuse or knew something was going on, the moment that the first red flag was thrown on the play, that's when the help needs to be introduced. Like I said, in our society, we have a very, very bad problem with, with, with wanting to learn how to put out a fire when everything is on fire and falling apart. So who needed mental health, mental health help in this situation? Everybody, right down to the children, everyone, hmm. everyone. We normalize, and the manosphere is very good at doing this. They normalize this into thinking that women are these villains and that we want to keep men from their kids and things like that. No, that's not the situation. And then on the flip side of that, society is also, especially for me, because I feel very strongly about this. The minute someone like me says, okay, mental health help, this is necessary, this is important. That is not my way of justifying somebody's behavior. Right. Okay. Them women didn't lose their lives. He took their lives from them. Let's just be clear on that. Okay. I understand that. However, I tell anybody who, and I've, and I've done this, um, of course, y'all know what I do for a living, advising people that when you're going through a divorce, when you're going through violence in the home, and it could be, you know, the children being violent towards parents, mom being violent towards dad, just people being violent in general. A swift change in the home. You know, certain allegations being presented, like in this situation. This is not normal stuff. This is trauma. We, when we hear that word, we think of somebody bleeding. We think of, we think of you know, um, full blown, this glamorized picture of what, what society and television and media has showed us in terms of trauma. These things are trauma. Period. Point blank. Okay. I mean, I got really strong views on, especially in our culture, on what we've been exposed to in terms of trauma. Living in a housing project where three, four days out of the week, you hearing gunshots. Mm -hmm. For some of us, oh, that's just normal. Oh, I grew up here. You know, that's what it was. Trauma. That's what it is. And people deal with trauma and they handle trauma in different ways. Um, when Cannon was speaking about the the you know the education and the stages and 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 the phases of homicidal behavior i was thinking also of how the it contrasts but yet compares with the suicide protocol i have to do for a living with individuals who make allegations of wanting to take their own life or take the lives of other people all of these things red flags that's why with some of the manosphere stuff and then wanting to do harm to women and then some of them turning around talking about how they're worthless and they don't know if they can find anybody. Red flags. It's all. We just need to learn how to notice these things before the full building is engulfed in flames, if you will, with the analogy that I'm using. So, I mean, we can. I'm not dishonoring or discounting the fact that these women were victims of homicidal and, and just playing out sick behavior. I'm not discounting that. But if we're going to look at the bigger picture, I think it's important for us to see where we can learn from, from each point. And I think the, the first time that he was violent or spoke violent towards them or aggressive towards them, the first time something popped off that was not a norm or that, that put somebody's life in danger, red flag. That's what I'm saying. We just need to know All how right. to recognize that. All right. Let's hear from our guest. Tony, what do you think about this? Well, I mean, you guys pretty much covered it all. Is my audio okay, by the way? Yeah, you're good. Audio good. Okay, cool. Um, you pretty much covered it all. I think everybody in this situation, um, well, specifically the, the male himself needed some mental help. And I'm not really sure of the psyche of the women. I, I personally don't believe that everybody needs mental help. I believe that most people do. Um, but we, we really don't know. We definitely know he needed some mental health in that situation. And uh, I think, um, you know, this goes to show why protection is important to females and why uh, females need a, a male influence in the house because I think that situation would have would, would went totally different had uh, the woman had a, a, you know, a powerful male figure in the household. And that's pretty much it. That's my take on it. Okay. 